worship. You deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. perfected in our lives. Brother, can you help me with this song? Adonai, I think by Nathaniel Bassi. Just want us as we, as the minister and sing that song, I just want us to tune our hearts to heaven and truly expect God to visit us this morning. I want us to align our hearts. I want us to forget about however we came here this morning or the mood or the states we are just want us in the next few minutes just to look up to heaven and see what god has for us today amen amen, amen. praise a living god Hallelujah. we are still in the season of jubilee the season of celebration amen There will be strength for my insight. There will be strength for my insight. 
So we spread to my inside My last cat up to 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 The Bible says do I have one man buried But our inner man is with you every day But our inner man is with you every day Man let us get it get it get it get it All those that wait upon the Lord shall we do that thing All those that wait upon the Lord shall we do that we are down that thing All those that we do that wait upon the Lord shall we do that thing We look up to you. We look up to you. My leg will go banana bath. It's our prayer that you look upon us. It's our prayer that you look upon us. My leg has to get it, get it. As a church will pray. As a church will pray. Oh, my God has to be there. We pray and we cry. Look upon us. Look upon us. Look upon us. Help us today. Help us today. Help us today. My God has to be there. Get it, get it, get it, get it. that you take over we have come with our hearts ready we have come with our with our hearts hungry we have come with our spirits testy lord it's our prayer that will not go back the same way in the name of jesus it's our sincere prayer that even peradventure will just stumble into the service we didn't make plans or we didn't even want to be here Oh Lord, it's our prayer that you reach out to every one of us in the name of Jesus. It's a prayer that as we have come here, we will touch you in the name of Jesus. It's a prayer that you look upon us. Look upon us with your mercy. Look upon us with your grace. Look upon us with your power. 
look upon us with insight. The Bible told us about two men, two of Jesus' disciples that were walking after Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. The Bible said Jesus Christ appeared to them and they were walking on the road. They were, they were just walking down the road. At first, they had no inclination who this man was. As, but as, as he began to speak, the Bible says their eyes were open and the scriptures were opened unto them. And behold, they knew the man they were walking with. Lord, it's a prayer that to, at this, this morning, our eyes will be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Our hearts will be readily open to receive in thy name of Jesus. Lord, we pray like never before, the scriptures will be opened up unto us in thy name of Jesus. Everything not planted by you in today's service, we pray they will be uprooted by fire in thy name of Jesus. Take over, take charge. At the end of the day, we will ascribe all glory to your holy name. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let's put hands together for Jesus. seated in God's presence. Thank you very much, choir. God continually, abundantly, supernaturally bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking on a topic briefly, but as I tag the season of Jubilee, or we could, we could, we could, we could term it more appropriately, the season of perfect Jubilee. Amen. For uh, many of us, for, for any of us that did not follow up or partake in the just concluded convention, truly, truly, we have missed a lot. Amen. It was, it was one of a kind. From the first day, I, I knew this was something different. I knew this was something very much different. I've been praying to God for strength. Strength in so many areas and so many aspects. And from the first day when I went back home, I knew I've been sprinting. I was sharing with my sister and she was almost fed up with what I was saying that, that night. There was something just triggered in my spirit. And I said, wow, God, I pray this will continue in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're talking about the season of perfect jubilee. And um, we've heard a lot, for those that follow the program, we've heard a lot about what jubilee is. But I will just give a little, um, just a little addition to what we've heard or a little emphasis on what we've already heard. The season of perfect jubilee. That text will be taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 to 11. Isaiah 61 1 to 11. Isaiah 61 1 to 11. When we hear of the word jubilee, the, 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 something comes to mind. I mean, we have the dictionary that portrays several um, worthy definitions, but the, the main thing or the first that comes to mind is a time for celebration. We have the what we call the um, silver jubilee, which is 25 years. We have the golden, which is 50. We have up to the platinum, which I think is 75 or 70. But basically, the, the take-home point is that jubilee means celebration, a time to celebrate something. A time to be excited about something. A time to jubilate about something. And more so this, there is something about this season. As many of us know, the redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide is celebrating um, um, 70 years. Amen? 70 years. Now, it's something so noteworthy that the time is significant. The season is significant. Amen? We are talking about the season we are right now, the season of perfect 
Jubilee. I just want to bring home a point and want us to want to carry us with, with an understanding for us to be fully sensitive so that we would not miss out of what God is doing during this period or what God is already doing and is still set to do. We must take note. The, the Bible is very particular when it comes to times and season. Times and season. And we must also be very sensitive about times and season. Not every time and season are the same. And we are in a season as this. When we go through the scripture, we see some things like um, at the appointed time. We see something like in, do this in remembrance of something. God is very specific. He's very particular about season. We can do something at different time, but if we can understand the season or the right timing when that thing can be done, then we can trap or we can tap from the blessings of that period or that season. Amen. We see from scripture, the Bible told us about men that, on, that have an understanding about the time and season. An example is Daniel. The Bible helps us understand that Jeremiah made a prophecy at some point that after 70 years, and we see a lot of mention, um, 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 the, 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 we, we, see, we see that, that term, 70 years, being mentioned over and over again. Amen. When we see some Bible verses we'll be reading shortly, we'll see emphasis on 70s. There's something special about it. And truly, I want us to fully understand so that we'll not just be hearers, we'll not just be viewers, or, or we'll not just act as an audience, but we'll partake in what God is doing. Amen. The Bible is specific about times and seasons. By the understanding of Daniel, he knew what God... And now, when we talk about times and season, we can tap into a season by, an, by understanding a prophecy that had been made before time. And all we need to do is to position ourselves, align ourselves with what God has said he will do. An example is when we see the Pentecost experience. But I also want us to understand that some of these experiences during um, specific seasons can be reproduced. Amen? We see that Jesus Christ said that the Holy Spirit was going to come at a particular time. So the word had gone forth. All the disciples needed to do was to align themselves so that they can fulfill that prophecy. Amen. We see the life of, we see Daniel as an example. Prophecy was already made by Jeremiah. And what Daniel needed to do was to know the time and then put, but let's look at the Bible. Let's look at the book of Daniel. Daniel. So I will not just rush and, and just fire away. Let's take it one step at a time so we build a perfect picture. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 to 3. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 to 3. Times and season. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 to 3. And the Bible says, Daniel, During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from the reading of the word of God, from an understanding of a prophecy that was made as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. Now this was Daniel aligning himself to the fulfillment of a prophecy after a particular season or time has been completed. Amen. And he prayed and that was actualized in his life. More so, we can also, by virtue of our understanding of something that God did at a particular time. Let me ask you, there was some days, something my mom used to do that I that was very, um, uh, that I was noteworthy. On her bed days, she always prays a prayer and says that she's asking God for a special gift. And over and over again, I see God just honor that special request on that special day. And she has learned that on that day, or on that particular time or season, like there is a special arrangement between her and God, that whatever, that, that specific birthday request will be honored. Understanding of times and season. God, heaven, 
recognizes times and seasons. The Bible told us of the sons of Issachar. And the Bible said that these were men that understood what? Times and seasons. Now, the job of these men was that was just to observe patterns, observe what God did years, years ago, and try to create back those patterns for God to replicate or do back what he did. Now, in that case, God may not actually say, okay, at this time, I'm going to do this or that. But they've studied the times and season. Let's say 10 years ago, at this time of the year, God did this. At that time, they will set themselves. They will prepare Israel and align to what God can do again at that time. The Bible told us about the, 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 when Jesus went to heal a lame man by the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says that one thing we learn from that pool is that at a, what, at a certain time, what happens? An angel comes to what? Stir the water at a specific certain time. So what all men did at that time was just to recognize those moments, those seasons, and prepare themselves for their blessings or miracle. What I'm trying to give us this little background study is that times and seasons are important in the sight of God. By virtue of aligning ourselves in a particular season or time, we can tap from heaven's many resources. Amen. This is another time again like that. This time holds several significance. Amen. This is a season of a perfect jubilee. And it will be very unwise of us if we allow this season pass and we fail to benefit from what it has to offer. Hallelujah. We would read from our text, our text right now. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 11. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 11. And we read. It's a lengthy verse, but I will take it one step at a time because everything we're talking about is loaded in this scripture. We will see the component or what makes up the season of Jubilee. All those things we find that are part or attributes or or what or, or the, 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 the makeup of the overword of Jubilee. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captive will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he would give a crown of beauty for arches, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great ox that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They would revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. Foreigners will be your servants. They will feed flocks and plow your fields and tend your, vi your vineyards. You will be called priests of the Lord, ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasures of the nations and boast in their riches. Instead of shame and dishonor, you would enjoy a double share of honor. You would possess a double portion of prosperity in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. Verse 8, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be recognized and honored among the nations. Everyone would realize that there are a people the Lord 
has blessed. And verse 10 says, I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. And the final one, verse 11 says, The sovereign Lord will show his justice to the nations of the world. Everyone will praise him. His righteousness will be like a garden in early spring with plants springing up everywhere. May God bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. From that, from that chapter we've read, it covers what one should experience in a perfect jubilee. Amen. The, 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 when we read this verse, it's an outcrowd of something that took place in the book of Leviticus chapter 25, where the Bible proclaimed the year of liberty. And when we read through that, through that um, book or chapter, it tells us that that year was set aside for restoration. All that have been lost, all that have been taken is restored back to their owners. So one thing we learned from there is that the year of Jubilee is a year of restoration. Now what is happening here in Azar is that it's just speaking about the Jubilee that we see in Leviticus chapter 25. Amen. Now from this verses we've read, we'll pick out seven things that should happen or that are component of a perfect Jubilee. And I'll take it from verse 1 down to the end. Amen. Times and season. Let me just open it up here again. So we pick out those things one after the other. Isaiah 61. Let us leave it open, please. Isaiah 61. From verse 2 says, of verse 1, the, the later end of verse 1, the B part of Isaiah chapter 61. He had sent me to bind up the broken hearted. The first thing we see is the power of healing at work. Now, this healing covers every aspect. Healing emotionally, healing physically, healing spiritually, healing mentally and otherwise. The first thing we see that characterizes the year or period or season of Jubilee is what healing. And when we look through scriptures, we see the healing power of God at work. Why we are bringing this, 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 um, this point out is that it's for us to be able to align ourselves. Amen. Change will only happen when the right action is taking place in the right timing. Amen. Now, it's for us to have an under understanding of the things that we ought to benefit or, or grab from, and we align ourselves. The first thing we see there is what? Healing. The Bible says what? He will comfort. He would heal. He would bind the broken hearted. If you are in need of healing, this is a season you can align yourself for complete healing. Amen. Because of time, the next thing we see there is what? And to Proclaim that captives will be watched, released, and prisoners will be freed. Without thinking so much, what is the next point we are picking from there now? Freedom, deliverance. Amen. The next thing that we want to look at that, that occurs during this season of Jubilee is deliverance. Deliverance from every sort of bondage. Let's open our Bibles to the book of
Isaiah again, 49.24. Isaiah 49.24. Isaiah 49.24. Let me read it from here so you can just keep my text for me like that. Isaiah 49, verse 24. And the Bible says, it's a common verse. It says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? But what? Thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. When God opened this best to my understanding, the, the, the key word there is that shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered. Simply means there are some person or there are some people that are held in captive by law. Simply means by virtue of what they must have done or what they must have ventured into, by law it's okay for them to be in captivity. But the Bible is saying that thus say of the Lord, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Amen. If any one of us here is in need of any form of from deliverance, from any form of bondage, from any form of habit, addiction, whatever it may be, this is a season to align ourselves and demand it from heaven. Amen. Deliverance is the next thing. Going forward on that verse, let's go to verse 2. The next thing we see is Verse 3, please. Verse 3. We see what we call a replacement plan. For ashes, you will get beauty. Amen? For mourning, you will get joyous blessing. Amen? For despair, you will get festive praise. Amen? If you go to verse 4, it says, For mourning, you will get what? Comfort. And nothing that takes place during this season, what I call divine substitution. Amen? For everything in our life that is not consistent with the plan of God for our life, in a season like this, we can make demand of on heaven for those things to be replaced. For beauty, for ashes, beauty. For mourning, comfort. For, for despair, praise. Amen? If we find ourselves in need of these things, this is a time for us to lay hold on these things. Amen. The next one. When we go down the line, we see something very important, which I may, I may spend a minute or two here, because the Bible says now, they will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They would revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. The next thing is that in a season like this, one of the components is what? Complete restoration. Now, restoration is God's, when we say restoration, is God's way of repairing what has been broken and making it better than how it was. Now, if, if something is restored unto you and is not better than how it was, the job is not complete. Let me give us a, a case study. Now, when we look at the life of Joseph, the Bible says at some point he was the, um, he was the right-hand man in the house of Potiphar. True or false? Now, and after then, something happened here and there. We know the story, right? We know the story? Okay. And he was kicked into prison. And the Bible says he was there for a while. Now, when it was time for God to remember him and restore him, if God just took him back to where he was, it's not complete restoration. Because if he has spent a while in the house of Potiphar, after some time, I believe he would have been recommended to go serve in a higher position. What I'm trying to say is that restoration is more than going back to where you are. It's going back beyond. Now, for instance, let's say I, I had a job that I was being, I was, or I applied for a job and I was being paid 30,000 and let's say something happened I lost the job and I was jobless for a while 
And after about five, six, ten years, and I prayed to God, and God wants to restore me back. And he restored me back to a job that pays me the same 30000 That is not restoration. Restoration makes, it makes up for the times that have been wasted. It compensates. It covers it up. And the only best way for that to happen is that I'm getting something far better. God has repaired something that was broken and lost. Far better than how it was that I will look back and say, God, thank you that I lost this thing. If that is not your testimony after restoration, that means it's not complete. The Bible is saying here is that they would rebuild the ancient roots, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They would revive them, though they have been deserted for generations. So they are coming with a beauty that makes them attractive. If you ask Joseph, he would tell you that he was happy, he was in prison, he was thrown away for a long while because it was through that encounter that he got something better off. What am I trying to say? God's type of restoration is a restoration that makes up for what you have lost. Restoration that covers up what you have lost. That makes you even happy that you lost that thing in the first place. I pray God will restore someone here today in the name of Jesus. God will give you a kind of testimony that will make up, not just to give you back what you lost, but give you more than it, that you'll be so happy that you lost that thing in the first place. May that be a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a season for this kind of testimony. The Bible says that when he turned away the captivity of Zion, it was like we were what? We were dreaming because it was, it shook us. It was beyond what we expected. Amen. Restoration. Restoration. The Bible talked about Job and that, and that good example. If I may ask, Job lost so many things, including his children. Simply means his children. He lost them. They died. Now, if you meet someone, a woman or a man that lost their children, and you ask them what kind of compensation, what kind of money they would get that would make them say, yes, thank God this happened. Or that would make that soul leave their, their, their heart. But when you read the last um, chapter of Job, Job chapter 42, verse 5, 6, 7, 8, the Bible says that God blessed Job that he got beyond what he had. Now, that blessing is beyond him giving, um, beyond God giving him back his children that he lost, even though he was richer than how he was. But Job began to throw a party to celebrate what God has done. Simply mean, the kind of blessing he got was the one that made him even forget the mourning, the sorrow, the loss he had. I pray God will give us such in thy name of Jesus. This is a season of this kind of blessings. The season of perfect jubilee. The next point is what? Foreigners will be your servants. They will feed your flocks and plow your field and tend your vineyard. The next thing we see is that we will get help from strange places. We will get help from places we least expect. Amen. As I was writing this, God brought something back to my remembrance. Why I was traveling, I was coming back, I had, I mean, I had a, man, a number of issues. When it comes to the documents I had, my passport, my um, luggage, there was one little comma with everything. I was a bit worried and scared when I was walking down the airport. And for those of us that have a little idea of how Nigerian airport works, when they find a reason, they would, they would, they would match on it very, very hard. Something very strange happened as I packed my, I was moving and something. I was moving towards the, um, where I'm going to be cleared, checked in and so on. And a lady called my name. And they called me Joe in short form, not Joseph. When she called my name, Joe, I never knew her. I never met her before. I was very shocked and amazed. I came to meet her. I said, am I okay? I, she, she took all the long story short. She assisted me to the several things I would have delayed my time, I would have spent money on. I was so shocked. What amazed me was that she told me several things about myself I never knew. I had to go back to meet her and say, uh -uh, 
I don't know you. Who are you? You know my name. You know my mother. You know my siblings. You know this. You know that about me. And it was very shocking when she began to tell me this and how she saw my picture. It was posted somewhere. And that's how, I mean, she knew me. It was posted by someone she knows. Amen. What made me talk about this is that it, it began to baffle me. Because the amount of help I got from that little Joe, I know you, it was, it was, it was magnificent. Help from strange places. The one you did not bargain for. The one you did not apply for. The one you did not contend for. May that be yours in the name of Jesus. Help from strange places. These are these something else we enjoy in the season of Jubilee. Two more points before we go. The, the next one is that you will be called priests of, of the Lord, ministers of our God. You will, be, you, would, you would feed on the treasures of the nations. So we'll talk about the help. And you will boast in their riches. Instead of shame and dishonor, you would enjoy a double share of honor. You would possess a double portion of prosperity in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. The next verse now says something. Verse 8 now. The B parts. Their descendants will be recognized and honored among the nations. Everyone will realize that they are a people the Lord has blessed. The next point is that you become your life, yourself, everything about you, those around you become a testimony to men. That by seeing you alone, they know that you are one that God has blessed. It's different when you have to announce what God have, has done for you. It's different when you have to share the stories. It's also more beautiful when men, by seeing you, they know that you have been blessed by God. The Bible told us of Joseph. Joseph was a man that the Bible says the Lord was with him. But that was not enough. The Bible says Potiphar knew and said it that the Lord is with you. Amen. The Bible told us about Jesus when he encountered um, Nicodemus. He told him that we know that you are a man sent from God. Because no one can do the things you do except what God is with him. Blessing so much that wherever we go, we carry the testimony that we have been blessed, we are recognized, we are honored by God. I pray that will be a portion in the name of Jesus. Finally, verse 10. Verse 10 and 11. The final thing that happens that sums it up is that it ends with rejoicing. It ends with celebration. It ends with jubilation. I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding, or a bride with her jewels. That kind of joy that gives you the feeling like you are in your own wedding. Amen. The sovereign Lord will show his justice to the nations of the world. Everyone will praise him. His righteousness will be like a garden in early spring with plants springing up everywhere. Every, each of the words in this chapter are loaded with a clear message of what can happen to a life that have aligned to the season of perfect jubilee. Time will fail us to talk about each of these points. But I just want us to take home this seven points and match it into our life and press into them. These are the possibilities. These are the, the things we can find that are consistent with a life of one that God has blessed. A good person we can use to study this is Joseph. 
if you look at the seven points we have mentioned, we see them being actualized in his life. From healing to restoration to deliverance to being a testimony. Amen. So let me talk about one. Let me just pick one, one and talk about. I mean, I will talk about all of them. When we think of help from strange places, the man that helped him was not, although he pleaded with the man to help him, when he was in the prison, the Bible says two men had a dream, the butler and the baker. And how Joseph expected the help to play out, it did not play out like that. But at God's own time, at the perfect timing, the help came in a strange way. In a strange way. Now, that is just little. The perfect example or embodiment of these things we have mentioned is Jesus Christ. If we read from verse 1, verse 1 says, I'm rounding up now. Verse 1 of those of, of where we've read says, I've gone far from there. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. The me being made reference to there is the person of Jesus Christ. He is a perfect, complete example of the, the point or the component of what we've talked about. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort and so on and so forth. Jesus Christ. The healing, more than him being healed. The Bible says, littered um, around scriptures, we see where he was healing the sick. He was delivering the oppressed. He was bringing joy to those that were in sorrow, that were mourning, that needed comfort at different points. The perfect example is Jesus Christ. Hence, we are going to pray. The Bible says something in the book of Philippians. Let's open up. Bible to the book of Philippians as we go into prayer. For every time men entered into seasons, it was true prayer. The Bible told us of Daniel. After he has understood what God was said to do, the Bible says he put on sackcloth and he prayed earnestly. And he prayed earnestly. Although the day of Pentecost had been prophesied to the early apostles. But when that season was at hand, the Bible says they waited and they what and they prayed. To enter into specific seasons for our life and that of our family, we must press into God. We must pray it into, happen, into happening. We must labor it into full manifestation. The Bible says... Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. We are going to do something very simple, but powerful. We are going to pray. The Bible says, I like KJV. This is not KJV. It is? Then my KJV is different. Oh, I'm, I'm. Okay, it's N KJV. The new one. Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I what? I press on. That I may what? Lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. He was simply saying, now I was saying earlier that everything we have seen there, Christ is the one that made it possible. Christ ensured that our jubilee was not tied to a specific year or um, time, but is a season we can forge out of us. Is a season we can call forth. More so, 
at this point, we are, too, we are at an advantage because this is the season for it. If you look at it from all around, we are celebrating 70 years, which signifies jubilee. Amen. Because the Bible says that at the seventieth year, you would celebrate the year of jubilee. More so, we've we've had our, our pastors, our men of God that have prophesied this jubilee into our life. And more than that, Jesus has made it to become an experience we can call for. That's what the Bible says. But I press on that I may lay hold. Now, you are simply laying hold of things that Christ has already laid hold of for you. You are, if Christ has laid, laid hold of your healing, for you to lay hold of it, you have to what? Press. There are few places we see press in the scripture. Another place we see in the book of Haggai that says that let us press to know God. Let us press to know God. Let's be on our feet. We are going to pray. And all what we are going to be doing is, is just word of mouth and it's just sweet talk. If we hear all of this and there is nothing that, that we find in our life that is expressing what we are hearing, what we, have, what, what we are seeing, Earlier on, I, I tagged the message, walking into Jubilee. But that, but, that, but that would have not been a perfect title or term because it means that we are not in yet. We are about to enter in. But this is a season we are already in. And all we need to do is to tap from its benefits and resources. Amen. Are we ready to press? Are we ready to lay hold? It, 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 it's at a personal level that you would know from the things we've mentioned or talked about or outlined, you would know the aspect you need to lay hold of. Is it healing? Deliverance? Testimony? Restoration? In the next five minutes, I just want us to lay those things, lay those things before God. Let's lay hold of those things. The Bible says that Christ has already laid hold of these things for us. All what we need to do is just what? Lay hold of on the price that Christ has already paid. Deliverance, healing, restoration. 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 Let's lay hold on it. Let's lay hold on it. Lehiza na katia kati kutusha katambo. Lehiza na hatunta rehizu de kikambo gonda li pombo zoda. Father, we lay hold, we lay hold, we lay hold. We lay hold, we lay hold. What are those things deficient in our life? What are those things missing out from our life? Are we in need of healing? Are we in need of restoration? Are we in need of deliverance? We can lay hold on those things. We can lay hold, we can make demand on, on those things. This is a season that makes, if, if, that makes our, our demands our request to be tripled in the ears of heaven that makes it to sound so loud because this is a season for it. Change happens when our right action meets at the right timing. Father, we lay hold. It's true prayers that we lay hold. Because the Bible says we should press, we should press, we should press. We should press, we should press, we should press, we should press. La kasha katuku tu keti kakambo, reba la hazojene e kwambara zoneka. Whatever may be those things that is hindering us from fully reflecting these possibilities of God. Father, we pray you deliver us from them. God can restore. 
God can deliver against all odds beyond what we know beyond what we've heard God can substitute our pain for sweetness he can substitute our shame for glory he can substitute our arch ashes for beauty our mourning for comfort only if we can press only if we can lay hold I want us to talk to God I want us to talk to God what are those things we see in our life that are not consistent with 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 this season we find ourselves I can tell you of a true God can deliver the person I was just about a week ago is not the person I am right now God can deliver if only we can take advantage of a season of a time of a moment we can see things beyond what we can think of children we lay hold for our parents we lay hold for our families we lay hold for your church we lay hold whatever it may be that we have lost we have learned that beyond repairing and rebuilding you can do beyond what we had before lord we pray we ask whatever are those things we have lost father restore lord restore restore if we have lost our spiritual standpoint with you father restore whatever we have lost physically father restore gods can deliver us from both physical and spiritual bondage bible says whoever the son of man has set free is free indeed jesus can deliver Jesus can deliver. Are you oppressed? Are you suppressed? Father, deliver. La zukunta ikote irabada jeka zukunta likwambara. This is a year that the Bible says to proclaim His liberty, His freedom. Freedom shall the prey of the might be taken away, shall the lawful captive be delivered. But thus said the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be delivered, and the prey of the terrible shall be taken away. Are we in bondage? Jesus, deliver us, Jesus, save us. Oh, Mase Kumba de Kitumbarla Hazonda. We lay hold. Christ has paid the price of our deliverance. He has laid hold of our healing for us. Lord, we lay hold of those things that Christ has laid hold for us. We lay hold of, of them. We lay hold. 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 We would become a testimony to everyone around us. That they will see us and they say, this one has been blessed of the Lord. They will see us and they say that God, God has been with this one. They are asking, where is our God? Where is our God? Jesus will lay hold. All those things our life is lacking, that we are not fully reflecting the possibilities of God. The Bible says in, 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 in Philemon that the communication of our faith will be effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing. 
simply mean by if if the world we speak will be effectual will be effective then men will see something in us and say god is good Rabazo zegina mato kuta lehen ni kukumba ne kibuza na janata mara hazo gede 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 leke kumba tizi kuja ne kanya kutunda kabo lay hold for your families lay hold for your families what are those things you see in your home that is not consistent with what God has spoken into their life is it delay you can lay hold on speed you can lay hold on speed is it sickness is it weariness is it broken is it is it for those that have been broken hatchet oh you can lay hold on healing you can lay hold on healing you can lay hold on healing whatever bondage it may be delay can be a bondage you you may be regressing rather than progressing you can live good on god's deliverance it may be an obsession you can lay hold on deliverance it may be an addiction you can lay hold on god's deliverance the bible says but thus said the lord even the lawful captive even though by your mistake by your errors by your shortcomings you 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 fell into captivity the word of god has come has gone forth even the lawful captives shall be delivered what have you lost god can restore Father, we thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor. Thank you because you have chosen a season like this to show us mercy. Thank you because you have chosen a time like this to remember us. Thank you because you've chosen a time like this to restore us. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your divine substitution. Thank you for making us a testimony. Thank you for giving us reasons to rejoice. Lord, we pray. This will become the permanent day-to-day -day event of our lives in thy name of Jesus. We will be able to testify of your goodness. Not just us testifying, but men will see us and say, Wow, God is with you. Men will see us and say, Wow, God has blessed you. This word may this charge or message may look very simple. But we are aligning with what you are already doing that is effectual, that is evident in the camp, our headquarters. We are sinking in, we are tapping to the things you've already established. And if the word can find expression there, if we are truly children, the covenant children of RCCG, then surely it will rub on us.
Thank you for watching this video. If you have been blessed by this message and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, can you say this simple prayer after me? The Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of mercy. I confess my sin and come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Let your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary cleanse me from all my righteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you have said that prayer along with me now, I want to say congratulations to you. For more information and inquiry, please contact us via the information on the screen. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. God bless you.